It's fair to say that the 2013 Mac Pro, amongst other things, had a very unique thermal design. And uh, it does have a bit of a reputation for getting a touch toasty. So in today's video, I want to show you how you can set up custom fan curves using a third-party app uh, so that you can take control of the thermal performance of the Trashcan Mac. Uh, let's go to the design first of all and the reason why we might need to do this. So if we open up our cylinder, it's such a beautiful design. What you can see is that they have this triangular metal heatsink and all of the components are sharing this for their cooling needs. So for example, we've got a graphics card here. Uh, we've got another graphics card here and an SSD mounted on top of it. I've got an NVMe SSD in mine, not the original Mac one. You've got memory then on either side of the machine. You've got your power supply here and hidden behind the power supply is the CPU logic board. At the top of the assembly, we have a single large fan and that's drawing air through these vents at the bottom of the machine and it exhausts out of the top of the machine. And it's a great design. It's, uh, it's really clever until the moment it's not. And let me explain what happens here. Suppose you're doing a task that requires intensive CPU, intensive disk read and write activity and intensive use of the graphics cards. You end up with this kind of perfect storm of temperatures. So the CPU is getting hotter, that's heating up that central heatsink. The GPUs start to heat up. And one of those GPUs, of course, has the SSD sat on top of it. The SSD is getting hotter as well. So everything inside the system is heating up and it all shares that central heatsink. So temperatures accelerate really quickly when you've got all of those things heating up at once. Apple decided to make its fan curves very conservative for this machine. They were prioritizing low noise. So the single fan spins at a pretty low speed most of the time and you can't hear it. Now, of course, a quiet running Mac is ideal if you're into professional audio and you're in a studio environment, but it's not so great if you're doing tasks that involve all of these components at the same time. For example, rendering video, where you're gonna have high disk activity. You're going to have lots of GPU activity and lots of CPU activity all at once. You want that fan to ramp up quickly to keep those temperatures under control. And with Apple's standard fan curve, it just doesn't ramp up fast enough. So I use a little app called TG Pro made by a company called Tuna Belly Software. And if you go to their website, you can download it and try it out. But the actual price that they're asking is very modest, $10 or eight pounds here in the UK. And I think that's well worth it. So let's put our Mac back together. We'll boot it up and I'll do a screen recording and just run you through the features of the app and show you how to set it up. So now that TG Pro is activated and installed, let's just do a quick run through of the features. Now, I will say that there's a, a detailed tutorial or manual on the Tuna Belly software website, so you can run through that. What I'll do is just take you through the main features. The first application window you're gonna see is the main application window, which shows you all of the temperatures of all of the sensors inside the computer. And on the left-hand side, we can narrow those down so we can filter by CPU, the GPU, logic board, memory, PCI Express, and the power supply. And helpfully, we see the average computer temperature listed here at the top on the menu bar and the CPU temperature. If we click these three buttons here, we can go straight into the preferences for temperatures. So we can choose Fahrenheit if we want. We can switch on hard drive monitoring as well. And down here is our fan control. Now, when you first install the application, it'll be set to system. And that means that it's just gonna allow macOS to run the fan as per usual. And what you'll notice is that most of the time it'll be down at the absolute bare minimum. If we want to, we can just click the manual button and we can control the fan speed. It takes a moment just to ramp up, but we can turn it up to max if we want to. You may just be able to hear the Mac Pro spooling up in the background. It's definitely audible now. But the main reason to use this app is not to manually control your fan speed. What you're really gonna want to do is set your own fan curves and that is the auto boost section. So if you select auto boost and then just go to the three dots, it'll open up the preferences on the appropriate page. And here we have our auto boost rules and I've left this to the default settings. So first of all, we've got three rules, but we can add additional rules if we want to and we can delete rules. So the first item in the rule is the fan. Of course, our Mac Pro only has one main fan. If you're using a different Mac, you might have more options there. 
And then we can specify the speed that we want that fan to run up to in a percentage. So this is 50% of maximum speed. When do we want it to do that? Well, then we can choose a temperature sensor or we can choose uh, this very helpful sensor that's selected by default, which is highest CPU, or you can choose any sensor. Actually, I tend to use the default settings and I just monitor it for a while and then I'll tweak it in line with my workflow. So I'm gonna leave it on highest CPU and then it's saying once that gets to above 70 degrees C, the fan should be running at about 50% speed. Uh, and that is probably about right. But what you will notice if you look up here in the menu bar, we've helpfully got the temperature of our CPU highest sensor. And you can see that that's at uh, just over 70 degrees C. So the fan is running at 1300 RPM. And it is just about audible, but I don't think that will come through on the microphone. So if you were in a music studio or something like that, I think that would be okay. Obviously, once you go above 50%, you can start to hear it a bit more. If you just leave it on the system setting, then the CPU will be comfortably above 70 degrees and the system fan control will have the fan running at minimum speed. And then you get to those kind of perfect storm scenarios that I spoke about earlier. And uh, there's really not a lot you can do in that case because the fan can't respond quickly enough. Our next two rules, we increase the fan speed up to 75%. Once we get to 85 degrees or above, I might change that to uh, 80 and uh, then up to 100% once we go above, say, 90 degrees. And bear in mind that we're just using the CPU temperature here, so if the graphics cards are getting hot, then those rules aren't gonna apply. So we might want to create an actual rule uh, based on any sensor, or you might want to choose one of the graphics card sensors, leave that up to you to play with. The great thing about this is because you can see the temperatures up here in the menu bar, as you're working, you'll see what happens with the fan and you can adjust it based on the performance of the system. Okay, let's just do a quick run through of the other settings here. So we can choose our ramp up time. So we've got a 10 second gradual time here for auto boost. So it'll slowly ramp the fan up and TG Pro will be disabled when the system sleeps. Now I've switched on the CPU throttle fix, which is for Intel machines like our Mac Pro. And what this does is it will increase the fans uh, to ensure that the CPU doesn't thermal throttle. So we wanna have that on in addition to the rules that we've set up here. Now we also have this option to completely override the system. And I would recommend that you don't do that because if anything goes wrong with TG Pro at any point, at least the system fan curves will kick in. Whereas if you override them, that will not be the case and you are responsible for the fan curves for the machine. So let's just close the preferences. We'll go back to our main application window here, and we're going to close that as well. Now the app is running in the background up here in our menu bar, and if we just uh, hover over, we can see the definitions of the temperatures that we're looking at in the menu bar, and if we just give it a single click, you'll see that we've got our fan control at the top. We can quickly switch it back to system. We can quickly go into manual override, and as you can see, I tend to leave that at its maximum setting. So all you've got is that two clicks. Click on the menu bar, click on manual, and you're immediately at the fastest fan speed. And then we have each individual sensor listed. We can always open the main app window by just going show main window. We're back to where we were. We can quickly get to preferences, and we can also quickly launch the app tutorial on the website. Very useful. Here in our preferences, we can control pretty much every aspect of the application. So we want it to automatically launch when we boot the Mac and we want it to run in the background, in other words, up here in the menu bar. We then have other options for setting hotkeys or um, logging data. We can change how the menu bar settings work. We can choose which bits of information we see, whether they're horizontally aligned or vertically. Uh, we can change the font. We can use shorter titles if we're tight on space. And we can even choose where our fan controls are positioned in that menu. Temperatures, uh, we looked at that briefly earlier, you can switch to Fahrenheit. We can also set up notifications. So if you're using your Mac remotely, running it as a, some kind of server, if you put in some SMTP details for a mail server here, you can have TG Pro notify you when there is a temperature event. And you can choose what that trigger is down here. That might be useful for some people. You can switch on logging if you want to log all the details. Fan is where we uh, set up our fan curves and update just enables us to switch on automatic update checking or not for the app. 
So that's TG Pro. What a fantastic tool and well worth that modest asking price. It's a great way to control the thermal performance of your 2013 Mac Pro and keep those temperatures in check. I hope you found this video useful. As always, thanks in advance for your subs, your likes, even your dislikes. I look forward to reading your comments and I'll see you again soon for some more geekery.